What's going on YouTube? This is Jay. Um, just wanted to give my sort of long-term review and opinions on Fuji Instax Film 300 camera, which is an instant photography camera. It is not a Polaroid camera. It is an instant camera, which means it takes instant photographs. Um, instant prints out a photo. A lot of people confuse these cameras for Polaroids because Polaroid was the first camera to come out with instant photography but not to be confused this is not a Polaroid this is Fujifilm Instax. Um, I'll get into the differences between Instax and Polaroid later on in this video. Uh, so first off, I'm going to get into specs. So this camera, the lens is a 95 millimeter lens, which is a fixed aperture of f14. The range goes from 0.9 to 3 meters, and when you twist the ring it'll go from 3 meters to infinity. Those are the two zone ranges. The shutter speeds are 1 64th of a second all the way to 1 200th of a second. The film size is 62 by 99. So automatically when you think of 14 you're thinking wow that is not gonna let in that much light and you are correct but you also have to keep into consideration that the film size is a lot larger than a 35 millimeter um, camera or 35 millimeter equivalent. So here's let me just give you an example. This is the size of what the sensor would be, what what the image is recording. So see how big it is. This is 35 millimeter. So as you can see, it's way more than double the size of a 35 millimeter camera. So yeah, f14 is not gonna let in a lot of light, but when you do the the math and you see how 35 millimeter works and how this format works, this format I would say it's bigger than medium format. It's almost large format in terms of sensor size. But it's a bit tricky. Um, all right, so to dive into other specs, it takes four AA batteries. It has a flash which cannot be forced off. But I occasionally I would use um, gaffer tape to cover it. So I would just smack some black gaffer tape, uh, you know, over it over the flash which would force it off. Um, the reason I prefer to shoot this camera with flash off is because the tones you get from it are very nice. Um, creation is nice. Um, sometimes when you shoot uh, in certain situations you get a nice tone. A nice uh, either a cool tone or a warm tone. I've noticed it's never it's never in, in between. Um, for instance, there's this shot, and there's a cool tone to it. And this was shot around sun, sunset, and then sunset, and then, you know, let's see what I have. See, this was shot in the snow, which it will make sense why it's a cool tone. But this is a warmer tone, and this was shot at um, sundown also. So it ranges. It's it's always in between. Um, all right. So let me run through the pros. Um, the main pro to this camera, main positive is 
it's an affordable camera. Uh, it's under $100 for the camera. I believe it's $87 right now at B&H Adorama and probably Amazon. Um, the film is affordable. You, know, you get a pack of a pack of Instax film. A, pa a double pack actually is about $15.99, and that comes with two packs of ten. Compared to other instant cameras, for for example, um, Impossible Film. That goes for about 24 bucks and you only get 8 shots. So this is definitely more of a bang. But uh, they're both suited for different situations. Um, impossible film is for people who like using Polaroids. Um, vintage Polaroid cameras. And this is suited for people who um, just want something affordable. And it's definitely more reliable. The images are more true to tone. Uh, I haven't gotten a lot of um, imperfect photos with this and when I have it's usually imperfection in terms of either it's overexposed or underexposed or slightly out of focus it's never imperfection such as light leaks or uh, ghosting or um, uh, chemicals not being spread through throughly um, Yeah, so um, two AA batteries, flash, can't turn off. You can force it on if you want to. This is the viewfinder, which is basically just helps you um, frame the shot. It is pretty accurate. Um, you always get about 5% more than what you're actually seeing. So it's not 100% accurate. You're actually going to get a bit of a wider shot. Um, there's a tripod mount which serves pretty much no purpose because there is no timer option on this camera. You cannot set a timer um, to take a shot of yourself or if you want to do a self portrait or if you want to be in a shot. That's There's no self timer which is one of the cons. Um, another con is that I've heard the camera is pretty um, reluctant to fail. It's um, If you put it in the bag and and the camera turns on if the lens extends and it's in your bag and let's say uh, your bag is packed and it extends it could break the lens so that is a negative it's never happened to me um, usually when I pack the camera I pack it in a bag and it's of itself um, I usually pack it in this bag I usually put it in here before I put it in a bag, just because I, I like to be safe about about how I travel with my gear. Um, it's a cool looking camera. Um, it's affordable. That's the, that's the number one positive. Um, film is affordable. It's easy to use. It's not for people who want to have any sort of custom settings. You cannot do long exposures. You can't do double exposures. Um, there's no bulb mode. There's there's only shoot shooting with flash shooting. Um, there's an option to lighten. There's an option to darken. <laughs> you know those are pretty much the only options. So this is um, um, in no way would I recommend this to somebody who is trying to be a creative or um, change you know change settings or uh, nighttime photography definitely not um, I would also not recommend it to somebody who does self portraits um, the, the Lomo Lomography Instant Instant Wide is a better camera for that it's also way more expensive. It's about twice the price. Um, it's an option I've been considering switching over to. Um, it's pricier, but it's better. Um, it's also a little flawed um, in terms of exposuring the exposuring um, 
the metering that it has inside the camera not this camera the uh, Lomo instant instant wide um, but the colors that you get from this are great um, it's Fuji so at the end of the day you have to understand that they come their background is for making film you know Fuji film um, you know Fuji is great with colors so the colors that come out of this are great the images are pretty sharp um, it's great for somebody who's into instant photography and they don't have to s I w that's what I, that's who I would recommend it for people who are it's t just taking a shot at the moment not somebody who wants to um, not for somebody who's more towards the side of, of creative but more to somebody who's on the side of capturing moments at home and um, possibly somebody who wants to take a few landscape snapshots um, not for somebody who's more towards the side of, of creative but more to somebody who's on the side of capturing moments at home and um, possibly somebody who wants to take a few landscape snapshots um, you could use the close-up lens which comes in the box and you do get some sort of creativity with that it's nothing too broad um, when you click when you're using a close-up lens and you're taking photos of subjects close-up you do get a bit of um, bokeh which looks nice um, it's not the best blur uh, background blur but it, it, it looks nice um, so that pretty much wraps up my opinion on the Instax 300 um, that's who I would recommend it for somebody who just wants to take snapshots uh, capture a quick memory or uh, I don't know take a picture of a landscape nothing too fancy uh, you know I mean yeah you can make great photographs from it I'm not gonna down I'm not gonna downsize it I've made great photographs from it and, and uh, I'm a creative myself uh, sometimes it's all about experimenting with the tool you have at the time um, in comparison to Polaroid I would like to show the difference so this is Instax wide and this is Polaroid so as you can see the wide Instax wide is wider and Polaroid is more of a square format. Uh, the Polaroid is has more length, more height than the wide. Uh, this is uh, impossible black and white, and this is just Instax wide. So, quality-wise, this feels a bit flimsier. This doesn't. It's thicker. Uh, yeah, and that wraps it up. And that's my opinion on the Instax 300 camera. So uh, I would like to hear your opinions. Uh, what do you think about the 300 um, camera? Would you say it's something that you would get? Um, would you rather lean more towards a uh, Lomography, Instax, or a Polaroid. Uh, what would you prefer? I personally prefer using whatever tool I have at the moment. Um, I definitely would be interested in trying the Lomography camera soon if I could get my hands on it. Um, yeah, that wraps it up. Peace.